Hello, welcome to China Mosaic. I'm Pandong in Beijing. The Australian government has issued a joint statement with the United States and Japan, calling on China to abide by the Hague Tribunal's ruling on the South China Sea. Australia seems to be particularly interested in the South China Sea arbitration, showing a more aggressive attitude than the Philippines, which has surprised many people. Now, if we look at Australia's territorial claims or other claims in Antarctica. We'll understand why it's hypocritical for Australia to demand that China complies with the so-called arbitration award. Australia's Antarctic territorial claim covers nearly 5.9 million square kilometers, about 42 percent of Antarctica's total area, and is equivalent to 80 percent of its own mainland territory. It's a claim based on a self-alleged. Long association with the Antarctic continent. However, keeping in mind the Hague Tribunal's ruling on the South China Sea, if China has no legal basis to claim historic rights to islands in the South China Sea, how can Australia claim Antarctic territory based on nothing more than a long association with the Antarctic continent? To take another relevant example, in the arbitration on the South China Sea, the Hague Tribunal ignored the fact that freshwater vegetables and poultry exist on Taiping Dao and ridiculously downgraded to a reef, deeming it incapable of sustaining human habitation or economic life and incapable of sustaining the claims to generate continental shelf and exclusive economic zone rights in keeping with the UNCLOS. By contrast. On Australia's most remote external territories, Heard Island and McDonald Islands, neither fisherman communities nor permanent residents are to be found. It snows for 70 percent of the year, and typhoons pack winds that blow at up to 210 kilometers per hour. Only scientific researchers would visit these two islands, but Australia still attempts to claim EEZ rights on them. It's unclear if the Australian government has carefully read the Hague Tribunal's ruling or what exactly it thinks about the award. But it's apparent that Australia is holding China to a double standard. Not only will it see no benefit from these actions, but it could find itself embroiled in a larger controversy. A wise country wouldn't acknowledge something that is against international law as international law. China hopes that Australia will join the majority of the international community in setting more store by international law. Australia has no right to rebuke China's legal actions to safeguard its sovereignty, especially in light of its own claims on Antarctic territory, Heard Island, and McDonald Islands. That's it for this edition of China Mosaic. I'm Pandong in Beijing. Bye bye.